Hey everyone, welcome back. In this Python tutorial, we are going to learn about variable scope in Python. So let me quickly copy the contents that I'll be covering in this particular tutorial. So first we'll discuss the variable scope in Python, the boundary of the variables within the program, local scope, global, global keyword, and then LEGB rule. Okay, so I'll quickly copy all this and let me create a file and I will name it as um, variable scope demo paste everything all right so what exactly we understand by the variable scope so whenever we are writing a function in the python programming we have defined certain variables right so say for example x uh, variable and then that x holds a certain value so uh, a variable which holds a string or integer so something like this right so say for example i given a name x and then provided certain value to this particular x so x is a variable here and then we assign certain value to the variable now we'll understand what exactly is scope of the variable within python so say for example you are writing a function and you define a variable within that function so when we talk about scope it is basically the boundary of that particular variable where it will be accessible so not all variables will be accessible from everywhere so if there is a variable which is within a function the scope of that variable or the boundary of that variable might be just within that function so we'll understand all of that and local scope and global scope are the first one that we'll cover so say for example i'll quickly define a function okay so i'll say uh, where scope demo so just a demo function and in this function say for example i am printing certain values say for example print x okay now print x i have to define this x first so say for example i define a variable x and i assign the value 20 to this particular variable and then i'm printing this value okay so if i print or if i just now um, so i printed it within the function now i'll call this function okay so i'll say variable scope demo and now if i'll execute this particular function then it will print 20 for me okay so now what is the scope of this 20 that has been defined in this particular function can i use it in any other function so say for example i define another function so i'll say where scope demo one and then i want to print x in this particular case okay so i'm trying to access the same variable that i have defined in the first function so here you will see that unresolved reference error is already shown so what this means is that if you have a variable which is defined within a specific function or scope is within the function then the variable cannot be accessed anywhere outside of that function and that's what the local scope is okay now say for example i do not define this variable in a local function right so i move it outside of this function and i move this outside here okay as soon as i'll move it out you'll see that the error has gone okay so this error has gone as well and now both the functions can access this particular variable and this is this has now become the global variable okay so now i can simply call the other function as well i can say variable scope demo one and then this 20 will be printed twice on my screen so you can see 20 has been printed twice so this is what a global scope of a variable is in very very simple terms so local scope any variable that you define within a particular function will be only accessible or the boundary of that variable will be only within that particular function if you move it to outside of the function that becomes a global variable and then you can access it so within that file you can access basically it um, from any of the methods or the functions that you define for uh, within that particular file so that's the global scope now there is another thing which is global keyword so what global keyword does is say for example i am within this particular function okay so let me move this again to this inside the function okay and now here if i use the keyword global i'll say global and then specify that 
this variable x is global. So with the keyword global, even though the variable is within a particular function, it will become global. So it will be accessible in any other functions of this particular program. So you'll see that now here it, there is no error in this variable scope demo one. If I run this program, you will see that it still runs perfectly fine. So this global keyword is very important. If you are stuck in a local scope and want to define the global variable, then use the keyword global. Okay. So these are very, very important concepts and will be really helpful in Python programming and in the Selenium automation with Python because these are very simple and basic concepts, but basics are really important to build your expertise when you go into the advanced um, topics, right? So basics need to be really, really clear. So practice as much as you can uh, around the global, local uh, and global keyword. Now, the next thing is uh, LEGB rule. So leg B rule. So basically what, how the scope is, uh, scope works. So basically, basically local L stands for local, E stands for enclosing, G for global and the built-in. Okay. So this is basically how the variables will be accessible. So if it is local, if a lo variable is local, it will be accessible only within the local scope of that particular function, right? So that's what we have already understood. Now global is higher than local. So if a variable has been defined as global, then it will be accessible across multiple functions that you define in the, in that particular scope. Now in closing, I'll cover in a moment and then built in is basically that is the highest level of scope. So any reserved keywords. So for example, the print statement or any reserved keywords that we have discussed initially have the built in scope. So that's the highest level of scope. It doesn't matter where you are in the Python program or how you have structured uh, your program. You will still be able to use those built in functions across all the files. Okay across all the scope. So that's the built-in level is the highest level. Then followed by global, then enclosing and the local. So what exactly is enclosing? So say for example, here, let me change it to local variable. Okay, so I'll remove this global keyword. All right. And say for example, here, this is the variable sco scope demo. And instead of this function outside of this function, the, the functions can be nested as well, right? So within this particular function, there can be child functions as well. So say for example, within this function, I have a child function, which is variable scope demo one. Okay. So in this particular case, this is enclosing scope. So if there is a function within a function, then that's the enclosing scope. Now X is the local variable here. Okay. Then I have defined another function, which is the child of this particular parent function. Now, if I call this particular function, okay, so I can't, I can't call this function outside of this, you know, scope here. So I have to call it somewhere here. Okay. So now what will happen is, if I'm calling this particular parent function here, right? So this parent function will be called. It will get inside this particular line here. So X is 20 now. So 20 will be printed. Then there'll be a sub uh, or variable scope demo one, which is the sub function of uh, this particular main function. Okay. So this is the parent and this is the child um, method. Now within this child method, there is another print X, right? So this X will again print the value. So the scope of this particular variable X will be still accessible in the child function. And then because I'm calling this demo one function, it will again print the value X. So 20 will be printed twice. So if I run this, you will see that 20 has been printed twice. The first 20 is from this particular print statement. And the second 20 is from this particular print statement, which is the uh, child function of this parent function. All right. So it doesn't matter what is the level of these functions. So I can have another function. So I'll say grandchild, say for example. Okay. So grandchild, let me name it as grandchild. And within this grandchild, I can still access this variable, which is defined as at the root level of the function. So this is the local scope of the X is the local scope of this variable scope demo, but the grandchild or the child function can still access it. So I can say print X and this is what enclosing scope is. Now here I'll call grandchild. So I'll call this grandchild here. Okay. So now 20 will be printed three times. Okay. 
So if I run this, so you'll see that 20 has been printed thrice, right? So first one uh, basically from um, this particular print statement, then second print. So three print statements are there within these three functions. And that's what basically has been printed. Now, say for example, let's understand this rule. So say for example, within this grandchild, there is a variable X, which holds the value 40. Okay, so let's say it's like this and then let me indent this properly and then similarly within this child function there is also a variable which has the value 50 okay and then at this level there is a variable x okay with the same name basically and then there is x at the top level as well which has the value 100. So in this particular case, what will happen? So what will be printed if we run this particular program? Okay, so just give a little bit of thought about this. Let's run and see what will be the outcome. So you'll see in this particular case, it has printed 20, 50 and 40. Okay, so why is that? So when we called this particular function here, so the first function so the first print statement basically right so it has this local variable x is equal to 20 which is which holds the value 20 and it has it has printed 20 now when it comes to this child function the child function also has the scope or the variable defined as x which is which holds the value 50 and that's why it has printed 50 in this case then grandchild also has the value 40 and it has printed 40 now say for example if this particular function doesn't have this particular variable defined then it will fall back to its parent function and will print the value that is defined at the parent level so if i run this now you will see 20 50 50 got printed right so that's what this legb rule is so if there is a local variable within the function that will be given the first preference if not then the enclosing so what is the enclosing variable what is the enclosing scope of this particular grandchild the enclosing scope is the parent function and what is the enclosing scope of both of these it is this one right so if this doesn't exist here that's what the case was then it was falling back to the enclosing scope right so in this particular case it was printing 20 20 20 for all of these three calls but if the enclosing scope is not there as well then it goes to the global now x is global there so it will print 100 in this particular case so there was no local so each of these functions don't have any local now each of these sub functions or the child function doesn't have even enclosing right so none of the parent function also have the enclosing variable in that particular case so it will move to the global scope so now in this case it will print 100 for all three calls so now it has referred to the 100 and then the last one is built in which is basically related related to the keywords so the built-in keywords in python so that can be accessed from anywhere so scope doesn't matter in that particular case all right so that's all for this particular tutorial on variable scope in python what exactly is the scope scope is the boundary of the variable so where from where you can access those variables within the program that's what the scope is we have understood about local scope global scope global keyword and legb rule so that's all i hope this was helpful and clear thank you very much for watching